Of course, July the 1st is uh, Mauricio Pochettino's official first day in charge at Stamford Bridge. And of course, he comes in uh, with a much thinner squad that he did initially when he obviously signed the contract to join the club. We've seen a number of players leaving, be it to other Premier League clubs or Saudi Arabia as well. Of course, without a doubt, Chelsea's biggest success over recent years was the victory against Manchester City in the Champions League final. And it's interesting when you take a look at the starting 11 from the side that won that game uh, by one goal to nil, how many changes there has been since then. I'm looking quickly and what are we talking? Silver, is that it? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much Games, it. Two, How difficult is it for Mauricio Pochettino coming in? We always talk about the spine of a team, don't we? There is no spine to this Chelsea side that we know of at the moment. How difficult no. is it for him now to put this together? <sighs> you know... Chihuahua and James, I forgot about those. It's... I've been trying to be really... thinking about this and trying to be really positive about it because I think his initial first couple of weeks for him are going to be pretty easy because he's going into a group that will lower than a snake's belly. OK. <laughs> and they won't need an awful lot of encouragement to get going. And so I expect the initial reaction to be a good one. You know, unfortunately, though, as good as individuals as he has on his squad, you don't have a spine, so how do you build one unless you go and buy some players? Right. So he needs to go and start bringing more players in. And we've been talking about how they need to get rid because we've got too many. Yeah. And on the face of it, getting rid of those nine we said is great. Now you've got a unit. But unfortunately, as it's, again, he needs to go and buy. He needs to go and get his spine. So... I'm not, I'm not sure that if you're a Chelsea fan, you should be too enthusiastic at the start of the season. Because this is And you were trying to be positive at the start I of the season. I was. <laughs> I was. I've been trying, I've been trying to think of, of all the good things that could happen under Pochettino. But as always, you come back to as good a coach as you've got, as good as ability you might have in the team, there are certain things you need in a football team right. to make it work and be successful. Yeah. And I don't think he has that at his disposal right now. So it, it's not going to be a quick turnaround uh, for I, Chelsea. It's not. I think one of the greatest positives coming in for Pochettino or coming into to Chelsea is how poor they've been, which right. is a strange thing to take as a positive. Right. But there, there <laughs> is no real expectation right now about where Chelsea will finish next season. Financially, they have to finish in Champions League spots, but that's more financial concern. That's not one... Um, uh, that's not a footballing concern from a fan, fan's perspective or expectation. Um, and, and then I, I, think, I think Chelsea have addressed their major concern in Nicholas Jackson and Christopher Nkunku in goals. I don't know, Shaq. Jackson is so raw. Like, we saw a lot of VRL last right, season. But I, I, they, they, have, they have addressed their lack of goals in those two players, who I think will work together. That being said, everything else, given how big a dressing room Chelsea finished last season with, from now till the end of August, the end of the transfer window, who comes and goes, or who comes, is dependent on who, who goes. Right. They've, they've trimmed extensively, as we just showed, nine players on, on, on that graphic. They probably need to do quite a bit more. And then whoever comes in is, is as a result of who they're able to get out and, and at what price. And, and again, that's a weird thing. That's a weird problem to inherit as, as a coach, as a coach of Chelsea, as a coach of Mauricio Pochettino's pedigree. Uh, where's this Nicholas Jackson love come from, Gab? Well, I mean, look, Chelsea are under some pretty severe uh, restrictions uh, in, terms of, in terms of who they can sign. Um, and uh, and this is why they've moved so many guys out. Um, and, and I actually think we should give a little bit of credit to to, to, to Lawrence Stewart and, and Win Stanley for the job that they've done in getting these guys out. Uh, some cases for some, I think, very good uh, fees after after the freak show that was you know that were the previous two uh, transfer windows. Um, I shock I said though they need people in and. 
you know, Nico Jackson uh, at 30 million, you figure between him, between um, Armando Broja, who at some point I think has got to be fit, uh, and Christopher Nkunku, you know, you've got three guys who you can rotate in and out if you want to play front two. Nkunku on his own is something we haven't really seen, but Nkunku can play different positions. And so you saw that uh, to some degree. Um, for me, I, he's a very raw player. He's not a very prolific player. Um, but at 22, you know, you're getting a guy on the rise. It's in, it's in keeping with what Chelsea say they want to do. Younger players, long-term contracts, avoid uh, uh, the huge salaries. So he fits the project that way, whether he's good enough. You know, but at Chelsea, there's been enough big busts from Ryan Sterling to Mudrik that if those guys just play up to uh, their, 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 their transfer fees or, or their salaries, you know, Chelsea will be competing for top four regardless. And Jules, like Gab talks about this plan of youngsters and long-term contract, but it's a plan that hasn't borne any fruit so far. No, but in a, in a very difficult context with, obviously, the previous manager, Graham Potter, it was, I think, difficult for him with all those players, under the pressure, all the expectations, the new ownership, the money spent. All of that was, was very, I think, very difficult. So I don't want to write off last season. I think they need to take... To, to, to get some lessons from what happened, the way they managed the club, every, everything really. And it's almost a fresh, it's a new start with a new manager. But Poch is very good with youngsters. To go back to what Gab was saying on Nico Jackson, I think Poch would probably like having Nico Jackson and work with him and model him in what he wants him to do as a, as a, as a lone striker, for example, than, than, than someone like Romelu Lukaku. Then there's Nkunku coming with, with more pedigree, with more experience. And again, he's, he will offer you different positions, different roles, which is something that Pochino really, really likes. Right now, in midfield, though, they only have Enzo and Craig Burley. That's pretty much it. So they need to sign players in and to need, bring, to need, to need, to need to bring players in. We saw that they missed out on Ugarte, for example, who went to PSG, because there was a point where they could not go all the way to the 60 million release clause that he had. So financially, despite all the players leaving, and that was the big priority, they still will be restricted, like Gab said, on who they can buy and for how much they can buy. So that's something that we need to keep an eye on for who they're going to bring in midfield, especially, and I guess defensively too, but especially in midfield, because right now, with all the departures, Kovacic, Conte, Loftus-Cheek, really Enzo is the last man standing and that's not enough.